new video about the Raspberry Pi problems uh, that many people face uh, during uh, operating the Raspberry Pi and among them the hardest one I think that is to enable the Jupyter notebook, Jupyter IPython notebook from the Raspberry Pi if you are using any Python projects or Python program to run uh, from the Raspberry Pi to your PC, mobile devices, Arduinos, or uh, sorry, uh, the Android phones or iPhones or any other devices or uh, Mac books or Windows PCs, laptops, and etc. etc. So, uh, and this is very much handy in when you uh, be learning some basic machine learning programs like uh, which are not be using any GPUs for uh, testing the Raspberry Pi or for not <coughs> for, that is the uh, libraries like CUDA libraries that is offered by NVIDIA in order to run TensorFlow and the TensorFlow is mainly a library of mesh for machine learning in order to uh, have uh, machine learning deep learning programs executing through by by the GPU acceleration method but the basic uh, there is another version of tensorflow that is that uses cpu as acceleration purpose in order to run different deep learning and machine learning programs so i think in that case many want to uh, run the raspberry pi as the deep learning platform in this case so they mainly want to have an ssh connection or a, uh, a wireless connection by which they can execute the cores of raspberry pi in their pcs or mobile devices or so on okay or mac books or mac mac pcs uh, so mac desktops so for that uh, let us at have to at first we have to connect raspberry pi using ssh and you already know that what is ssh that is secure shell that is a uh, option to in, in order to connect your raspberry pi or any linux devices remotely or that is wirelessly from anywhere any place of the world uh, and mainly it is for the local area network that is the IP, within the IP address of a same router or same uh, modem, but you can run it based on Unix based uh, PCs or laptops or single board computers like Raspberry but, Pi. Uh, let us at first connect the Raspberry Pi for this. At, for this, we have to, we can use is the one is the options that is one is the uh, Windows uh, WSL that is the uh, uh, Windows subsystem for Linux uh, that is the Ubuntu 18.04 LTS or you can use the latest version that is 20.04 LTS which is available on the Microsoft official Microsoft store and you, all, you also can use PuTTY in order to, to uh, have a SSH connection to your Raspberry Pi and if you use PuTTY then you will only you can only write the uh, your host name of your device that is in in the in this case the raspberry pi and uh, you, you have to select ssh and port should be 22 in order to have a connection by ssh and you can open and it will be prompting as login as which username it is by default pi and the password is raspberry though i have changed my password before you can also change your password uh, using sudo PASSWD that is sudo PASSWD and you'll be doing the uh, you'll be prompt having prompt for changing your password so we'll not be going through this uh, okay let us can uh, disconnect the session we can I have also previously said that you can use also in the subsystem for Linux that is the Ubuntu and you have to use this following command SSH by at the rate of the IP address of your host that is here in this case Raspberry Pi. You will be prompting you to give the Raspberry Pi's password, which I have also already said it is not Raspberry in this case, but it is by default Raspberry. I have changed my password. So 
we have come to the headless version of raspberry pi by which you can control your raspberry pi using this uh, headless option that is ssh by ssh so we have to execute a few lines of code is installing jupyter or ipython notebook in order to have a remotely in order to use it remotely from raspberry pi to your local pcs or devices any other devices and you should know one thing that uh, you have to be on the same network in order to execute this and if you are on a different network that means on another place or another country of the world and you want to uh, use this python notebook ipython notebook uh, from your raspberry pi to that pc you can't use this option you have to use another option that pen vpn platform that uh, is a special vpn in order to configure your devices and without having any security issue or without uh, having any uh, what i can say that uh, without having any security uh, breaches okay so you have to type the following command sudo apt install python 3 pip and you can see that uh, it is and it is also installed on my raspberry pi so there has been not any types of uh, install new, new installation but it will be having your installation if uh, for your case then you have to uh, write the following command that is pip3 install jupyter that is the jupyter notebook will be installed on your raspberry pi using this command or you so if i use this command pip3 install jupyter it is taking some time okay uh, you can see that liquid already set user. that means because I as I have uh, Also installed this package that is Jupyter notebook already using the p3 command I, it, it is Installed already so we'll be proceeding later uh, at the Last portion of this video and this is the last portion that is by which you can uh, Execute the this type of operation that is having remotely connect your Jupyter IPython notebook. Okay, you have and to then install, you have to execute the following command at, at then uh, that is pip that is uh, Jupyter notebook. Then you have to specify your IP address that is the default DNS IP address that will be using in order for access having access over all the devices which are connected through your local area network or that is in here simply you, through your router or your modem then we will specify another port that is 8080 that will also have a help you access to the default port by which you will be calling the raspberry pi uh, your raspberry pi's ipython notebook or the raspberry pi or the jupyter notebook to have connection to your pc okay then if i enter this uh, it will execute this command then you can see that <coughs> the exec the execution has been successfully completed then you have to what you have to do you have to copy this if you copy this type of uh, this uh, url that has been showed here let us copy it okay then if you go on a browser then if you simply paste this url there will be no connection that will be showing here but this isn't the that is the this isn't the exact way by which uh, you will be connecting your uh, jupyter notebook because this ip address is mainly your raspberry pi's default ip address or the ip address to which uh, the connection is made through Jupyter notebook to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, the, as this is a server, Jupyter notebook is mainly a server. So the server IP address which the Jupyter, uh, which the Raspberry Pi assigns to Jupyter notebook is mainly this one, that is one to seven point zero point zero point one. Uh, now in this case, what you will have to do, you have to simply change this IP address to the raspberry pi's default ip address that means the fixed ip address that i have already uh, said in my previous video that you have to do uh, the most important thing is 
before doing all of these internet type of tasks or SSH type of tasks, connection tasks, you have to fix your IP address that is giving a static IP address. So in my case, the, it is 192.168.1.50. So if I simply enter these, what will it do? It will simply uh, take me to the Jupyter IPython notebook server of that is running on the Raspberry Pi. It is, uh, I am saying again that this is mainly running from Raspberry Pi. This is not from, <clears throat> this is not for uh, Raspberry, uh, this is not for, this is not running on my PC, okay. This is running on Raspberry Pi and you can simply uh, use this GUI version logout in order to log out from your server of the Raspberry, of the Python, uh, or the IPython notebook or the Jupyter notebook and you can uh, uh, execute, uh, start having coding on Python using Python 2 which isn't supported anymore, the Python 2 version but the Python 3 version is having service till now. If you select Python 3, then it will prompt you to a new window that is and it will start your kernel and from here you can all you can easily have a basic uh, using a basic python command and what you have to do you can simply uh, press this run option which will run and it will also print 3 as i have executed 3 to run print 3 and you can also uh, for i in range I, uh, let us see like 3 let us print the 3 from that is from 0 to uh, 2 so you can also uh, I have executed this command by simply having shift and enter by simply pressing shift and enter and without uh, having running using this uh, GUI based uh, thing, but only running through shift enter of the keyboard, you can also run your code like this. So this is mainly the my video of, uh, part, and of course you can you have to log out every time you log in to your Raspberry uh, to the Python, IPython, or the Jupyter notebook server of your Raspberry Pi. You can simply use this option, log out option, or you can if you use this, it will be automatically log out. Okay. You have to also log out from your Raspberry Pi server. That means the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so what you have to do, you will only simply pre uh, press Control and C at a time, and it will shut down your notebook and also the all the other projects that are running currently. Okay. <coughs> okay. Then why? Okay. It will it is the kernel has successfully shutting down. Okay. So this is mainly my video. So I think uh, this video is much help, has been much helpful to you in order to execute different types of Jupyter notebooks uh, from your Raspberry Pi to your local PCs or any other devices, especially uh, the Android devices or the iPhones or iPad uh, through which you can uh, have an access to Python because Python only runs on Linux based devices and Windows and uh, some ARM based phones or mobile phones but not any uh, not in other places so you can execute codes from any any devices as much as you want using this method so I'll not be proceeding on from on the video and I'll not be lengthening here the, this video uh, so on. So, goodbye for now and see you soon on my next video.